this is a lot of prep here that I want to talk about bugging out. Only fools think things are going to be back to normal in three days. You know, they tell you to pack for three days. Three days. Ain't that something? Three days. Three days of food. You can go three weeks without food. Water, of course, is number one. Uh, keeping yourself warm and fire, but you've got to figure out what you're going to do. Because chances are, if you are forced to bug out, that means you're not going to be able to come home. It doesn't mean everything's going to be okay in three days. That you can come back home after three days and nothing's touched. These people are going to come into your home. and Some of them ain't going to do anything to it. They're not going to destroy it. They're just going to go in there looking for food and they're going to leave or whatever. But then you got those that's going to turn everything upside down. They're going to look for everything. They're going to rip the drawers out. They're going to throw the pictures down on the ground. They're going to do whatever. They're going to look for whatever they can to use. They're going to look for whatever guns you left behind or whatever food you left behind or water you left behind. They're going to look for medication. You're going to look for people who are strung out on drugs that's going to take whatever medication they can find that's left up in the cabinets. The thing is, is take, you're sitting there packing for three days. Then after three days, you're screwed. Providing you don't, if you don't have any knowledge. The problem is a lot of them don't. They just think you're going to be all right. Okay, three days, I'm going to head out there, I'm going to be fine. No, you're not. Not if, with that attitude. You're not going to be able to come home after three days. I mean, get real. Get real. I mean, bottom line is, you may never be able to come home. Uh, Coach still said, I look like I was packed down like a mule, a packing horse. And I had a, enough future in line and stuff to last me for a year. The point is, is that I don't plan on coming back. If I've got to bug out, that means there's a very good chance I'm not going to be able to come back to my home when or if I ever will be able to come back to it. And even if I get to come back to it, it's not going to be the same. Chances are it's going to be destroyed because you're going to be doing the very same thing that these other people are out here doing, looking for food, looking for shelter. Clothes is the least of my concern. Because for simple reason is we're clothes poor. There's clothes in all these places everywhere. You're gonna find clothes. You're gonna find shoes. You're gonna find socks. You're gonna find something other. You don't need a whole lot of clothes to put in your backpack to get out. Water and food, yes. Things to keep you warm with, yes. You don't excuse me, you don't necessarily have to have a pad. You can make a pad underneath your bedroll with uh, leaves or sticks or whatever. You can use whatever you find. Old cardboard boxes. you got to realize if SHTF happens and you are forced to bug out, you're going to have stuff laying around to make you something with. And that's just bottom line on that. Now, a lot of people, they've got their little bug out bags made, but they buy all this fancy stuff they're putting in it. And that fancy stuff ain't going to help you any. And you need to get thinking a little bit more real. Buying all these little filter things and stuff and all that, that's fine and dandy too if you've got the money by it. But let's say for sake, you've got the cart one that costs us a couple hundred dollars. You know, that's pretty expensive. My backpack costs quite a bit, but I've got another one. I can, use, I can downsize that backpack and take part of it off and make it smaller. But once it's all empty... It's, I'm done with it. I mean, you know, you don't really need it. You need a smaller one to survive on. I mean, whatever you got, you got to learn to survive off the land. And then you're carrying this one with a cart to it. The problem is with that is what if someone comes along? How are you going to, what are you going to do? They can take it. I mean, there's no way stopping them from it. So it's a hang if you do and a hang if you don't. One friend of mine said he has 10 can of insurer in his backpack. He said a friend of his told him to pack for t what he needed for two days. He said he packed enough to do for two weeks. Now, people think, okay, I'm packing some peanut butter, and I'm packing up this, and I'm packing up honey. The fact is, honey water is going to get me from point A to point B. I'm going to use that. Someone said, boy, that's an awful lot of peanut butter eating one day. Not if you're burning calories. When you are having a walk and you're trying to get the miles in, and trying to get to a location, a secure location, you are going to need the protein to survive on. So everybody's different on their backpacks. I've seen some of these showing that you need to have this vitamin patch and that vitamin patch and this patch and that patch. Everybody's different. A lot of them are out to sell these products. 
Same with the MREs and the other stuff. It all can get very expensive, especially if you're on a budget. So get real. Don't think that you're going to bug out for three days and come back and everything's going to be fine because it's not necessarily going to be. You might get lucky and your house might not be touched. But in most cases, you're just not going to be lucky. You're going to come back home and your home's going to be trashed. Busted windows, busted everything. And chances are you're not going to get to come back home at all. You're going to have to find your place to go somewhere. Somewhere out of town or whatever it is. Uh, to a friend's house or whatever it is. Maybe you've got range for mate to meet someone somewhere. Maybe you've got stashes hid somewhere. Now there's a 50-50 chance somebody else has found them. But that's a chance you got to take. But a lot of people, they make your little bug out bags. And that's it. They got enough for three days. They're figuring for three days of surviving. And they don't figure past that because they think after three days they can go home. Because you know why? Because the government tells you that things are usually back to normal after three days. This is what they tell you after three days. Things usually get back to normal. They tell you to have three days of food and water and stuff in your home in case of emergency. After that, it's back to normal. But people have told me that sometimes it was two weeks, even a month, before they really got any help. So do you really think a three-day bug out bag is going to survive if you don't have the knowledge how to survive off the land? And you don't know what time of year it is. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not planning on bugging out unless I have no choice in it. And if I have to bug out, that means I'm not coming back. And I might be packed down like a pack mule for a few days, but I can get rid of some of the stuff. And I'm always changing things around and rearranging and figuring out how to do something a little different. The bigger backpack, my friend will probably use it. My son might end up using it. I've got a smaller one. It's always an option. You know, things is what you've got to have. So if you're going to bug out, don't think you're going to come back in three days and everything's going to be fine. You better accept the fact is that Chances are you're not going to be able to come back at all. And if you do, you're lucky. In most cases, if you're forced to bug out because marauders is coming down the road, or if you worry, or you're forced to leave because there's a virus outbreak and there's just dead bodies all, all over the place or whatever, and you feel it's time to leave, or it, even in the case of a... Um, some kind of alien uprise, whatever the reason is, you know, the rise of the dead, whatever, is forcing you to get out of town. Don't think everything's going to be just fine, because you know what? The government's going to take care of themselves when it comes down to it. If it gets too bad, they're going underground, and they're going to leave the rest of us to defend our own selves. So don't think, when you fish that bug out for three days, that you're coming back to what was left. I mean, it's just bottom line. I mean, no one's perfect on their bug out bags and I've seen several different ones made and yes I'm worried about eating I'm worried about my water I'm worried about having a mash with my shelter and stuff and I'm thinking in the long term because I'm not thinking three days I'm thinking longer than that but once it's gone once you've used it up it's gone then you gotta figure out what you're gonna do after that only fools think they're going to come back after three days and everything's fine. Just because the government tells you to be set up for three days don't mean anything. It just They're telling you three days. You better think two weeks. You better think a month. You better think longer than that. Because you're going to stay in your home as long as you can. But if you're forced to bug out and forced to leave, you better be saying goodbye home. Because you're not going to have anything most likely to return to. This is Live Prepper, World of Joan. Be safe. Be happy. Bless you all.